every year I always set some sort of challenge. A mix of buzzing and shit in it. <laughs> I was trying to find something that would be a real challenge for a cyclist that has trained to power and is instinctively a racer as opposed to an endurance cyclist. Have you eaten many times on the bike? Loads. And many meals? Like... Well, we're going to see how that goes. It's about increasingly making that challenge that gives you that buzz and drive. So cycling for 24 hours kind of seemed quite a good way to start that. He loves this idea of endurance. I can't stay awake for 24 hours. You know, so the idea of riding around a park on a bike, extraordinary, extraordinarily stupid, but he set about doing it. Elvis got involved, so he's got a, a ride partner. Okay. 24 hours non-stop around Richmond Park. I thought, I want to help Chris achieve that. So I said, look, I want to do it. Please, can we do it together? And he said, yeah. There's a great big crew of ripcord riders at the start. Are we actually doing this? Yeah. I was really nervous at that point. I was having that mind battle of if I could actually do it. What way are we going? No, mate. <laughs> I think it's this way. The main rules for the challenge would be that one of us is always cycling for 24 hours. If one person stops, you stop for a lap. If I stop, it would be toilet, food, turbo and wait until Elvis would come past again and join on the back. Richmond for me has always been a very special part of growing up going there as a kid and exploring that place. Every lap of the park is a varied lap. It's 6.7 miles a lap. You are climbing for probably about half of each lap um, with a long descent towards the end. We decided to ride anti-clockwise. Uh, being that we're always turning left, we're never turning ac across traffic and it's supposed to be an easier lap so you're not forcing your heart rate to go over the top. The coach we have on board, Ken, is an incredible guy but I'm a little bit scared of him. Come on, what have you got? That would really, really help you if you were three kilograms left. I try and do everything that he tells me to do and then go an extra yard as well. You two got very similar threshold heart rates. You work underneath that, it gives your body more of a chance to yeah. get those actual fitness gains. That's why you want to train by zone to you know your numbers. It sounds really. like he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> well, I'm really good at bullshit. <laughs> Long hours in the saddle. It means very early starts and potentially very late ends. The morning routine is basically filling up with coffee and cereal and everything, and then going out and riding a bike for a whole day. The other thing about it is it's really a customised eating on the bike, sleep deprivation, riding through the middle of the night. It's tough, but all the training gives you the right preparation for the actual challenge. So we are five and a half hours into the challenge so far. So we're sitting at about 14, 15 miles now. Probably a little bit too fast pace-wise, but with the support and other people around actually makes it quite easy because you're not necessarily in the wind or in anything to kind of slow you down. So far, so good. Legs feel strong. I feel okay. So I came about being a member of Ripcore um, originally through Ant and uh, I was cycling for other teams and racing around for other teams. He introduced me to the club. I just sort of went, yeah, I completely get this. It completely makes sense to me. Initially, Sean and I set up Ripcore as a vehicle, if you like, to raise money for a charity ride that we were doing. And over time, more and more people have got involved with wanting to come out and be part of the club. And the support for Pace, the charity of our choice, has remained a constant within that. So everything we do, if there's any money left over or we make a turn on something, that money goes to Pace. So we've got guys in the team who you know, go off and they'll do Land's End John O'Groats or they're going off and doing their triathlon. And you know, I think that's one of the lovely things about Ripcore is the fact that people ride as a team, but they go and do their own thing as well. Everyone brings their own little individual bit to Ripcore. They're all aware of pace, clearly, but it's, uh, it's in the background. It's not something that we do to generate money, and that's a reason for being. It's just part of, of the culture of the club. Dudes. Hello. How's it going? All right. Two bikes. Full strip down, please. Yep. Rebuild. We've got the wheels from Hunt, the chain rings, and the power meter from yep. Berth. Oh, that's cool. I'll uh, grab the bike and we'll crack on. 
we did a lot of really big tour, either bike builds or wheel builds, which is kind of, which is what we always intended to do anyway. You know, we always wanted to be an adventure-based shop. Nice to be able to have the chance to kind of sponsor them. You know, they've got a really tight-knit you know friends that are kind of really just up for riding and having fun, but also this, the more serious side of it is they are raising money for a really important cause. It's helping improve people's lives where a lot of people could just sit on their ass and do nothing. They're actually getting out on their bikes and sitting on their ass and pedaling for it. I opened up my email and had a, an email from the headmaster at Pace Dave and in that email was a video sort of a class that whenever I've gone there I've spent a lot of time with. Good luck with your cycle. Seeing the video and seeing the kids made me realise actually what we were doing and the I guess the, the value in it for them. And it made it very real very quickly. I mean, it was already so close to the event, but it was much more that, um, you know, it was coming directly from them. And it hit, it hit home. It hit home really hard. I've done night riding before. I've done uh, London, Brighton, London before through the night. And I, I did it last year, and I said, last year, I'm never doing it again. And then I did it again. We had an 18 hour night ride, which was brutal, um, dead quiet, pitch black, couldn't see a thing anywhere. All you can hear is the hum of the wheels because it was so lonely and it was so dark and so cold. And you get to this point where you think, what, what the hell am I doing? I'm quite worried about the deer actually. They're very hard to judge. Like they'd be sitting at the side of the road at one point. At the next point, they just <laughs> in front of you. You have to concentrate even harder, even though you're already tired, because you've been cycling all day. Um, there's a lot of miles in the legs at that point. You are physically and mentally tired anyway. Every kind of bit of wildlife appears. I really don't enjoy it. I came in to go to the toilet and eat some food. I knew that there was realistically five or six more hours of that to go. There wasn't many of us left, but there was a few of us around still. I'm thinking, oh, I'd quite like a little snooze at this point. So the night shift was definitely the toughest bit. I made a playlist. Oh. I cranked work to the France, the whole lot on it. That'd be amazing. That'd be wicked when it have some tunes. Border listening to Elvis's bullshit. Is that a hall? It's son of a son of a rich one in the don't fucking try to reach from part right now, mate. Chris, myself, Elvis, and a guy called Sean. And I think we were probably keeping the neighbours awake with our appalling singing. Absolutely appalling. front lights of the bikes were kind of crossing over and it was kind of like something out of E.T. The big kind of moon there had just come up and it was, yeah, it was mental. No cars on the road, dodging deers and rabbits and getting Elvis to sing shitty 80s tunes and things like that that he normally wouldn't do and it was... And then what, then you got out of the car and rode with them for a bit? That's yeah? right, yeah, 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 that was, um, yeah. I'd finished my sleep by then, <laughs> got out, had some cake and then, and then got on the bike. What if I could fall asleep on my bike? What do you reckon? I could have a kip. Just like a five minutes or something. That'd be awesome. We also had this noise up which seemed to work to spook the deer. And it was basically like Dr. Zoidberg from Futurama. Yeah. The... And uh, I don't know where it came from. Just at that moment, somehow it worked. that tough night ride and um, you get this payoff as the sun comes up that's the best bit.
There was no real conversation, it was, it was really quiet. Everyone, I think, collectively enjoyed that moment. The tough part was done. It was coming into the day. Effectively, it was the home stretch. And at that point, there was nothing really to stop it. The fact that I rode one lap on my own in 24 hours, which is 20 minutes, is that kind of says the support on its own. Tried to take it all in and realise what I'd actually done about you know cycling around the same thing for 24 hours and not actually being that bored of it as well. From the moment we started to the moment we ended, there was people, anything from the little discussions and the little pats on the back, Ronnie feeding the orange slices. Yeah, I'll put the distance in the road, 215 miles. That was pretty special. You need that support to make this kind of thing work. Stop this now, could I? No. Yeah. <laughs> it's 324 miles, I think, in the end, that they rode in 24 hours. That's Liverpool and then halfway back. That's down to Penzance from London. I mean, it's an extraordinary distance that they cycled round a park. We've done what we set out to do. We've made the money we set out to make and we've got the exposure for pace that we wanted to get. It was fantastic, actually, just to see your friends achieve something that perhaps they didn't think they'd be able to achieve. And to know that it's actually part of a bigger picture as well. It's not just about bikes. It's for people and about people by people.